Chapter 1. The Whole School Transports. Seaside, the Archaeology Museum. The entrance plaza is abuzz with voices, as countless vibrant students step off the bus, gathering together. They are all high schoolers from St. I Academy. Today, they have come to participate in the school's Museum Day event. At a class assembly point, bald headed Charlie, with a lazy look, flips through the roster in his hand, casually calling out names he knows by heart. Roger. A handsome young man with golden hair raises his hand, here. Bennett. Another responds, here. Eudora. Here, sir. Owen Douglas. When this name is called, no response comes from the crowd. Owen? Charlie frowns, asking again. Seeing no reply, Charlie lifts his head, scanning the crowd. Where has that guy gone? Did anyone see him? Someone answers, don't know. Just saw him on the school bus a while ago. The students look around, but no one can spot Owen. However, everyone present finds this normal since Owen always had a low presence in the class. He never disturbed anyone, nor did anyone care much about what he did. Come to think of it, Owen seemed to have no friends at school. Sir, I say we just go ahead without him, Roger said with a laugh. That guy never fits in anyway. This kind of activity isn't his thing, and his absence won't make any difference. Let's just head into the museum. As the most popular boy in the class and the captain of the school basketball team, Roger's words immediately garnered a lot of agreement from the other students. Yeah, he's not a little kid. If he gets lost, whose fault is that? Look, other classes have already entered the museum. Let's hurry up and not fall too far behind them. Yeah, yeah, Charlie, let's go. This put Charlie in a bit of a dilemma. Scratching his head, although Owen was indeed a low-profile student, he was still responsible for him. All right, you guys go ahead. Follow the class in front and the guide will lead you, Charlie said. I'll go look for Owen. As the students lined up and started entering the museum, Charlie spotted Owen, looking drowsy and walking slowly towards them. He put away the roll call sheet and approached him. Owen! Where have you been? Why are you just getting here? Owen struggled to lift his eyelids, recognized his teacher, and rubbed his eyes. Sorry, sir. I was really sleepy and fell asleep on the bus. Charlie crossed his arms, looking exasperated. Owen always liked to sleep during classes. Many teachers didn't like him, and over time, no teacher really wanted to deal with him. How could such a vibrant young man always be so sleepy? In fact, Owen himself found it hard to explain. He didn't understand why he was always so tired lately, no matter how much he slept. And every time he fell asleep, he would dream, weird, peculiar dreams, as if revealing a whole new world to him, a magical land he had never seen before. Forget it, let's not talk about this now. Today is the school's museum day. Hurry up and catch up with your classmates. Don't fall behind. Charlie said, knowing all too well that Owen's manner was the reason he had trouble making friends. Owen nodded and hurried after his classmates. Just as Owen stepped through the museum's entrance. In the museum's underground storage room, inside a safe, an ancient fossil suddenly burst into dazzling light. The next second. A holy light descended from the sky, breaking through the clouds, and enveloping the museum in its brilliance. Seeing this extraordinary phenomenon, the students and teachers on the plaza who hadn't yet entered the museum were stunned. Charlie, too, stood frozen in place, mesmerized by the radiant holy light and the celestial music that seemed to fill his ears. With a whoosh sound. The entire museum, including the basement and foundation, vanished from sight in an instant. Where the museum once stood, now there was only a massive crater. What happened? Did I fall asleep again? Owen slowly opened his eyes. He found himself lying at the entrance of the museum and quickly sat up. But soon, Owen realized something was amiss. Before him, countless students who had entered the museum ahead of him were all collapsed on the ground. The scene looked bizarrely eerie. Owen, feeling a bit scared, turned around, 
intending to leave the Erie Museum first. But when he turned his head, he was completely stunned. The museum's exterior was no longer a plaza. Instead, what met his eyes was an endless grassland. In the distance, there were towering snow-capped mountains, and strange flying creatures circled in the sky. This place was definitely not seaside. As Owen stared into the distance, dazed, his classmates behind him gradually began to wake up. Just like Owen, they too were astonished. Some braver students ran outside the museum, exclaiming in awe as they gazed into the distance. What's going on? Some kind of prank? Are we on a reality show? One student said. I don't know. Weren't we just touring the museum? How did we end up here all of a sudden? I recognize this place. Those mountains, this grassland. It must be New Zealand. My parents took me there on a trip last summer. It looks more like Scandinavia to me. Whatever it is, it's definitely not seaside. The students were buzzing with discussions. Normally, such noise would have brought a teacher forward to maintain discipline and keep the students quiet. But oddly enough, all the adults from the museum, the teachers, tour guides, and security personnel had vanished. Only a group of 16 and 17 year old high school students remained. Gradually, all the students left the museum and gathered on the grassland. Owen quickly estimated the number of people around him. Roughly 200. It seemed that almost all of the high school students from the school were here. The few who weren't must have been those who hadn't managed to enter the museum in time. At that moment, a student wearing glasses, known for his love of fantasy literature, suddenly shouted, I've got it. We've traveled to another world. We're in a nice guy. A few students nearby gave the bespectacled boy strange looks. It's true. Look at those snow-capped mountains in the distance, and the holy light shining. Such wondrous natural phenomena are impossible in our world. The boy with glasses tried to convince the others, and those flying creatures, they're definitely not any bird species known to mankind. Owen looked in the direction he was pointing. Indeed, the flying creatures, which seem to have four legs, didn't resemble birds at all. Wait, those things, they seem to be flying closer to us. There are more behind the clouds. Whatever they are, run. Back to the museum. The students were terrified to see that more and more of those strange, four-legged flying creatures were appearing in the sky. Some, reacting quickly, had already started running back towards the museum. As the flying creatures neared landing, some of the students who had run into the museum earlier, acting selfishly, didn't wait for their classmates. They quickly pushed the museum doors shut and locked them from inside. Hey! What are you doing in there? Let us in, shouted the students outside. Open the door! Hurry! Do you want to betray us? We're from the same school. Through the glass, the students inside shouted back, Stop banging. We're not opening the door. Yeah, who knows what those monsters outside are. What if they get in when we open the door? Owen stood outside the museum, noticing among the students barricading the door several familiar faces, including those who often bullied and ostracized him, led by Roger. Owen gave up on the idea of seeking shelter in the museum. He calmly watched the creatures flying towards them, feeling no fear in his heart. Somehow, he felt a strange familiarity with this world, as if he had seen it in his dreams. Chapter 2 The Prophecy Soon, the flying creatures landed steadily on the ground. They were entirely black, with smooth bodies devoid of fur, and their wings were like those of a bat, devoid of feathers. Their heads were elongated, somewhat horse-like, but they had no eyes. Instead, they had three pairs of long ears, as if they relied on sound for navigation. It was only when these flying creatures landed that Owen realized there were beings riding on their backs. Not exactly humans, but rather various humanoid creatures. And they were dressed in very archaic attire. Among them, some looked indistinguishable from ordinary humans while others resembled elves and dwarves from fantasy films, along with many other humanoid creatures with strange features. At last, we have waited, 
for the saints foretold in the prophecy, spoke a white-haired elder, the first to descend on the flying creature. He appeared much like an elderly human, dignified, as if he held a lofty status. Following him, a slender woman landed, her skin a deep blue, with emerald green eyes and pointed ears. Great elder, our elves haven't had the first pick of the saints in a long time. I'm afraid you'll have to yield the opportunity to me this time. A lion-headed humanoid landed beside the elf woman with a booming voice, our lion folk have never had the privilege of choosing a saint first. This time, it's our turn. Other races descended, creating a cacophony. Our witches needs to choose a saint first as well. Are our Thunderbird race any lesser than you? The scene became noisy, but the white-haired elder didn't get angry. In good spirits, he chuckled, no need to quarrel, my friends. The goddess of fate has already bound the destiny of your tribes with these prophesied saints. The order of choice won't change the outcome. The elder's words held a magical power that calmed people down, like a gentle spring breeze bringing peace to the soul. Owen Douglas watched the scene before him, unfazed, as if witnessing a scene from a movie. But his classmates were far from calm. What's all this about? What does saint mean, and where did these bizarre races come from? There must be hundreds of these species, I've never seen so many in books or movies. God help us, I hope they don't eat us. The students prayed in low voices, while Owen examined those races with keen interest. He wasn't scared of this scene, instead, he felt an inexplicable excitement. He sensed every cell in his body exhilarated, rejoicing. It was as if, he was born to be here. The elf woman's face lit up with eagerness. Great elder, what are we waiting for? Let's start the saint selection ceremony. The white-haired elder smiled slightly and, with a flick of his hand, a light ball appeared, Dear saints, please line up and touch the light ball one by one. Some tried to mask their fear with loud objections, Who are you to tell us to line up? The elder glanced at the speaker, still smiling, Saints, I understand your confusion and anxiety, but don't worry. Once you return to your respective races, everything will become clear. Owen's eyes sparkled, and his body stiffened slightly, as if controlled by an unseen force, automatically lining up. His classmates did the same, for a moment, their bodies seemed not their own, manipulated by an invisible strength. Over two hundred people ended up forming a queue, willingly or not. At that moment, an electronic chime sounded in Owen's mind, foreign mind power detected. Prophecy system activating. Prophecy system loading, 1%, 5%, 99%, prophecy system fully loaded. Startled by the electronic voice in his head, but unable to control his body, Owen didn't show any outward reaction. System? What are you for? Host, the primary function of this system is prophecy. You can now view your panel. Show me the panel. Host, Owen Douglas. Age, 16. Race, human. Bloodline, none. Strength, 3. Constitution, 2. Speed, 3. HP, 77. Special ability, prophecy. Prophecy, the host can foresee events occurring within the next three seconds from the moment this skill is used. This skill can be upgraded, the next level requires 100, fate points. Fate points, zero. Fate points, can be used to upgrade foresight capabilities. Owen's pupils constricted, his mind reeling with shock. To foresee the future? And this ability can be upgraded? Isn't that invincible? This ability seemed immensely powerful. Then, the system's electronic voice chimed in again, the system presents the host with a beginner's gift pack, offering a glimpse into a future fragment. Would you like to open it? Owen's eyes moved as he surveyed his surroundings, let's see it. How else would I know if this is real or not? After all, we're in an ice guy now. Anything could happen. As soon as he uttered those words, Owen felt his consciousness elevate, hovering in the sky as if he were a third-party observer in this world. He looked down at the scene below. In the vision, he saw himself standing still, fists clenched, with a dark expression. His classmates were smirking around him, looking at him triumphantly. 
Roger stood with his arms crossed, grinning and saying something, his eyes filled with contempt, obviously not speaking well. Many of the female students were gathered around Roger, also pointing and whispering about Owen. The powerful beings from the Ice Sky races were also looking at Owen, as if he were some rare spectacle, their gazes mixed with curiosity, pity, disdain, and scorn. Owen, hovering in the air, had a grim expression, what's happening to me? Why have I suddenly become the focus of everyone's attention, and in such an ominous way? As time progressed, Owen's classmates all finished touching the light ball, completing the ceremony. They were embraced by members of their respective races, leaving Owen standing alone and isolated. His expression grew even more troubled. Suddenly, a golden light shone from the distance, and a sense of oppression, emanating from the depths of his soul, approached from the horizon. Owen looked towards the distance, only seeing a pair of wings that blotted out the sky. Then, as if his consciousness was being sucked back, he abruptly returned to his own body. Owen moved slightly, realizing that at some point, he had regained control over his body. The first student had already touched the light ball. Owen didn't have time to focus on the first student, his mind was still echoing with the scene he had just witnessed. In the near future, possibly after this selection ceremony, he would become extremely unique, but in an unfavorable way. However, he had no time to dwell on the vision he had seen. The first student had already begun the ceremony. As the student touched the light ball, it instantly turned bright red, shooting a beam of light into the sky. A voice then resonated from the heavens, the saint selection ceremony has begun. Dear saints, please allow me to introduce the distribution of races in this world. Disadvantaged race, only beginning to learn the use of arcane energy, capable of simple spells, with most members still unable to utilize arcane energy. Intermediate race, most members can use arcane energy and have advanced in their utilization of it. Advanced race, every member is born with the ability to use arcane energy. Powerful individuals can even create and use catastrophic forbidden spells. Divine race, a race that has mastered arcane energy to the extreme, where every member is a grand mage. The most powerful among them are almost divine, known as demigods. Additionally, there are demons, the enemy of every race. Demons are a group of races that use dark arcane energy, transformed from advanced or divine races. Tormented by dark arcane energy, they are often violent, but extremely powerful. Good luck to everyone. The awakening ceremony will now continue. The people from the Ice Sky races, their faces alight with fervor, exclaimed, a pillar of recognition from the advanced race. The first saint is from the advanced race, and even accompanied by a heavenly broadcast. This has never happened before. End of chapter 2. Click on the link in the comments section to continue reading the novel.